Alright guys, so since me and Gareth, my awesome friend over at Video Tasties, I'm stealing him from his channel in the afternoon at 2.30 to watch After Hours from Martin Scorsese, which is a top five film for me. So I figured, <clears throat> why not do another non-horror dark comedy that is just phenomenal? And another film that I've grown up with that I have a lot of nostalgia with. And that is 1998's Very Bad Things. The cast here is phenomenal. Like Christian Slater. I have always loved Christian Slater in everything. And always reminded me of young Jack Nicholson. Which I know he got typecasted that way kind of. And he kind of, his career tapered off. Which is unfortunate. Because I adore him in almost everything that I've seen him in. But he kills it in this movie. He is so good as Boyd in this. Cameron Diaz is in this. She's phenomenal. Um, John Favreau's in this. Jeremy Piven. Uh, Daniel Stern. Uh, Leland Orser. Like, this, the cast is phenomenal. And if anyone hasn't seen this movie, if you like movies where... First of all, you got to have a sick, dark sense of humor like me. So if, you, if you're on this channel, you're, we're on the same page. <laughs> so have that ready. And if you like movies where things just keep getting worse and worse and worse <laughs> for the main characters, this is your movie. Like, this is the movie for you. So if you haven't seen Very Bad Things, definitely go check it out. Absolutely hysterical. But let's talk about it. 1998. I fucking love this movie. I was thinking also uh, or a little bit earlier that, I mean, I've covered a few comedies on here, more dark comedies, but it's a lot harder to, like, review or discuss a comedy because pretty much the whole point of watching comedy is for the comedy and the comedic timing and stuff like that. So a lot of it just ends up to me just laughing at jokes. So <laughs> this movie is just packed to the gills with just some of the darkest humor like I've seen in like a mainstream film and this was not a big hit if I remember correctly I don't think it was because you don't hear about very bad things brought up often at all and that's a that's a crime against humanity the score in this film fantastic <laughs> so good with dun, 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 with it. awesome and it, they use it to great effect throughout this whole film. And I love how they start at the end here, like during the wedding. I then go back to the beginning. And then just everything starts unfolding in the most traumatic, tragic ways possible for these people. So for anyone who hasn't seen it and is watching this, we have John Favreau and Cameron Diaz, Kyle and Laura Fisher. They're engaged. They're going to get married. And she's very controlling <laughs> like i'll put it that way she has to have it and and fine you know she has to have everything just right for her wedding and stuff she's nagging him about the chairs and what if you have non-padded chairs we ordered padded ones they gave us non-padded ones like she's like he's at his limit so him and his group of friends that they've known each other a long time including daniel stern and jeremy piven and orser and christian slider <laughs> who's deranged to say the least in this and they go to a bachelor party in vegas and everything goes wrong like absolutely everything like you the first time you see this film you have no idea what you're in for where you, where the story is going here and it's fa it's so fantastic so we meet robert boyd played by slater and he's a real estate guy but he's like in this like weird time in his life where he's it's almost like brainwashing like he's in a like he belongs to a cult but he doesn't belong to a cult but he's like into all this like life improvement stuff but it like pretty much includes like being a psychopath <laughs> so it only really works for him and other psychopaths i guess so he ends up calling this prostitute that he has her direct line so that way she she doesn't have to go through the uh the agency and sets this whole thing up for Vegas for this bachelor party. Robert Boyd? Tina! Great, okay, here's the deal. We're talking five guys. Nice guys, Tina, my friends. What do you think? Yeah. Well, I'm calling you directly so you don't have to go through the agency. Hey! 
you please not enter the house? That's correct. Cash straight to you. Could you hold on? Could you please wait off the property? We're just trying to sneak a peek. We'll just stay off the property until I'm off the phone. Why? Because that's the way we do it. Just he has so much charisma. <laughs> he has just so much charm to him. God, I love Christian Slater so much. I love when Cameron Diaz, when Laura starts um, list, listing off his friends and starts saying, like, after they get married, he might have to rethink his friendships. And he, she mentions more, played by Orser. And he, Kyle's just like, you know, he's trying so hard <laughs> to be a good, like, fiancé and future husband and not snap on this bitch. Like, she's, I could never... <laughs> be with a woman like this ever like she is so controlling so intense like for no reason i can't i didn't i can't again but she mentions more and he's like well okay honey but mind you like that we've been friends since the third grade <laughs> she's like he's weird he's just like he just doesn't talk much they show you him smoking a cigarette he's a mechanic he's a great character too man and favro kills it in this movie everybody the whole cast the acting is absolutely phenomenal in this film the whole dynamic between adam and michael the brother relationship is so well done in this film just how carefree michael is and just what like how he describes his brother just a panic junkie like adam worries about everything and the way that he starts like ready to crack as things go on they hate each other these brothers like it seems more michael has just some type of deep-rooted problem with his brother but they're off to vegas also adam has two disabled kids two sons that i'm not sure what they have one has the headgear and walks with the thing i don't know but they both are disabled which is sad but the <laughs> seen this movie the way it ends man oh it's a gut punch and gene triplehorn as um adam's wife lois is excellent too in this like she plays such a great wife role and terrible what happens to her too all the dialogue between this group of friends like on the way to vegas just like their arguments and stuff is is so good it sounds so genuine like I've been around people like this. Like, it just works for me 100%. Fucking opinion, okay? Oh, thank you. You have developed this incredibly annoying habit of talking just for the pleasure of hearing yourself speak. Listen, he, Boyd brought up statistics. Hey, 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 leave me out of this. The hell I did. The hell you didn't. You said, the hell I did. You said one out of every two marriages end in divorce. You said it. I didn't You're say You're an asshole. You said it. Hey, You're an asshole. Oh, oh, why am I an asshole? I Multiple reasons. Give me one. No. Name one reason. No. Give me one reason. I'm not going to give you a reason. Can't give me a reason. I don't have give to give you me a So funny. And again, just the relationship between Adam and Michael as brothers. I love how they make fun of Adam for being a Jew. <laughs> because uh, Kyle goes to use his cell phone to call the people about the padded chairs <laughs> that she's flipping out about on his way to Vegas. And he ends up using Adam's phone. And Adam's just like, you can't wait till we get back. And he's like, I'll pay you for the call. And <laughs> And Boyd starts saying, yeah, use my phone. He's like, what are you trying to say? He's like, you're a Jew. You're acting like a Jew. So funny. It's 45 cents a minute, he says. I feel like any type of dark humor, dark comedy film set in Vegas, the setting already is just magnificent. Like, if you've never been to Vegas, go to Vegas. I've been there once. I tell you all about it, but I really don't remember. <laughs> so they get to Vegas. They get to the hotel. And they are just partying like crazy. They are doing cocaine all over the place. The room is covered in blow. Like, alcohol everywhere. Bongs. Like, they're, they're living it up. Good for them. And I love how Moore is jumping around the furniture and stuff. Like, he's completely coked out of his mind. <laughs> That's so funny. He's leaping all over the furniture here in this beautiful hotel suite. This whole conversation between Adam and Fisher... Right here, buddy. Not gonna happen with me. My kid don't know the six fucking New England states. He has trouble with geography. I'm not gonna stick that shit in his face. I might help a little guy, you know? That's right. Put him in the car. Take him to Maine for the lobster dinner. That's how you teach a kid. Go skiing in Vermont. That's it. Take him skiing. For a Yankee Stadium for a hot dog. That's the way. You I'm got just it. saying. It's not, you don't stare him down. No, don't stare him down. I'm not gonna do it. Do not eyeball your kids. 
all of that is great. And then his whole, after the storm comes and everything's gone, like, what's still there? Like, what's alive? The, the little trees, the little fellas that the storm didn't see. And then you hear that, like, reference later on. You hear him speak that line again, like, the memory of it. And during that conversation between Adam and Fisher... He mentions that he's the godfather. Fisher is the godfather for Adam's children, the disabled ones. Well, those are all the kids he has, but his kids. And that plays into some things later on. <laughs> Events that will uh, happen and unfold here. So Tina, the hooker, shows up. And all she does, she's getting paid like $5,000 just to dance. Like anything's extra. So Michael wants to take her to bed. <laughs> Well, take her to the bathroom. So they go to the bathroom, they start fucking, and this is when everything just goes wrong. <laughs> and the way this is edited, I love it, that you see just, it gets more and more chaotic. They're banging in the bathroom, they're showing more going nuts, like coked out of his mind, and then he jumps into the glass table <laughs> and breaks through it right when he's, Michael's moving the prostitute in the bathroom, like holding her, and slams her up against the wall, and the fucking hook goes in the back of her head, <laughs> dead. And now she's just hanging by the hook on the back of the bathroom door, and they don't know what to do. Like, <laughs> thank God they got a psychopathic boy here, but what would you do in that situation? I mean, you call the cops. It's a fucking accident. But, it, you know, how hard that would be and scary I mean, I kind of don't blame them. I love their reactions <laughs> when the rest of them come into the bathroom. She's hanging there, and then her weight, the hook falls off, and so she falls off the wall and just falls to the ground. So funny. And then they're looking for a pulse, and they're like, is it the left side, right side? And it's like, it's either side, you idiot. <laughs> just all the dialogue is brilliant here. When Adam's yelling at his brother Michael, he's saying, like, what did you do? And he's like, the floor, it, it was wet. He's like, why is the floor wet? All of that is fantastic. 911. Oh, it's great. So now <laughs> they're taking a vote to call the police or not because of Boyd, who's saying, "Why call the police? She's dead already." So, and then he goes on just like, like I said, like this brainwashing <laughs> tangent to just make it sound right to validate everything and just say all right we're gonna go bury her in the desert <laughs> so their plan is to bury this pr dead prostitute in the desert all right seems like they can pull it off until the security guard comes <laughs> what the fuck have you done why are you calling an ambulance she's dead i'm sorry yeah. Sorry. Oh God! Just call the police. No. Just call nine one one. I slipped. What did you do? God damn it! Everybody, just get a hold of themselves here. All right? You are a lying, thieving. It was an accident. Are you sure this? Yes, was an I'm sure. What are you doing? I, the floor was wet, and so I slipped. Why was the floor wet? I don't Why know. Why was the floor I don't wet? Know. Why? God damn it! Stop <laughs> fucking pervert oh it's so it's it's amazing just the acting in this is so good so they vote on it they all out vote adam he's the one wants to call the police they all say desert so they getting ready to try to clean this up and the hotel staff ends up coming the manager so this guy walks in after knocking a few times and they're not answering. They're just hoping he goes away for some reason. And then they think he's gone, and he ends up using the key card and just walking right in. Now, she's in the bathroom, and the door's shut. But there's, a, like, the door's, like, it, it starts coming ajar a bit. And there's a mirror right on the back of the door, which reflects her body. And the guard sees it. Like, the manager sees it right before he's getting ready to leave. Like, Boyd gives him money because he sees the broken uh, table that Moore jumped on. So he's saying, like, what gets it to you people? He's like, drugs and alcohol, slam some cash in his hand. He's like, I got no problem with that. And then he sees the body. He goes in, and he's trying to calm the situation. All right, everybody calm down. Like, give space. Boyd, they're all freaking out. They're all saying, like, before you go in there, let's just say, like, let me tell you what happened. Like, sir, don't go in there. Boyd is already in psychotic mode, grabs a corkscrew, says, clear a path, <laughs> and stabs this guy 
in the chest multiple times with this corkscrew and shuts the door of the bathroom, locking him in there. They're holding it. <laughs> He's trying to bang for his life. He's screaming. It, it's it's kind of terrifying. <laughs> it really is. He's really, like, screaming, like, for, for his life. And you can hear it in this actor's performance. Even this guy does a great job. So they, now they got two bodies <laughs> that they got to get rid of. So they end up cutting up these bodies. They take a trip to the store. They buy a bunch of materials and stuff that they need. End up sawing the bodies up in the bathtub, cleaning up the whole bathroom and everything, making it look like nothing ever happened. And then they go to the desert to bury the bodies. The image of the bathroom when they open the door is horrific. There is blood everywhere all over the place <laughs> like it must take these people so long to clean this and i love how <laughs> one of them like says to him the guard before he goes in there he's like the floor was wet like <laughs> just throwing michael's line back in that's that's so clever i love that and then boyd's whole reasoning <laughs> and just making all of this sound right <laughs> so much of a new plan as a modification on the old one. I'm going police. So help me God. You touch that fucking phone, I'll bury you with it. Man, I can't say enough about his performance. And the soundtrack in this is great too. Like not just the main score, but like the songs used in it. Great songs in here too. Could you imagine walking out of a hotel lobby in Vegas, carrying suitcases with the dismembered corpses of two people? <laughs> Man, I cannot imagine the fear these people must be feeling. So the desert scene is hysterical. When they go to bury the bodies, they dig the two the two graves, and then Adam, being Jewish, says that this isn't right. Like their bodies are all mismatched and stuff. We have to reunite the bodies so the soul can rest in peace. And then just <laughs> I forget who says this is it Fisher. He just no fucking way. And then they start taking the body parts and they just start like trying to match them together and they're like going i got a leg more is freaking out he's like shaking and shit he's like i got his upper leg and her lower leg i got his upper leg and her lower leg and the whole comment by boyd <laughs> that this, she's asian they don't have jews in asia <laughs> and adam says michael back me up do they have jews in asia and he's like yes yes they have jews in asia all of that is great now the bodies are all buried and they head back hoping and they say a prayer and stuff kyle says he's about to marry uh, the woman he loves and hopefully like god forgive us here and give us a fresh start and then we see boyd playing mortal Kombat while adam is like freaking out we get like a little montage of like how they're all handling this adam is a wreck and boyd is just playing mortal Kombat with a grin on his face like so nicholson so adam starts worrying and thinking and cracking and saying, what if the security guard, do you think he had children? Uh, then it's in the paper the next day or something that he's missing and he had children and he's freaking out. So Adam starts cracking and they're afraid that he's going to just blow this whole thing and he's going to end up spilling everything. Boyd to Adam when they call him about the paper and he says, fuck you to Boyd and he starts taking the, the hammer or whatever and smashing the realty sign. But he says to Adam, fuck you too, you snake eyes cocksucker. Great line. <laughs> Great insult. This is like an iconic scene for people who've seen this movie. When uh, Adam goes into the gas station like market and his kids are screaming for whizzers. I don't know what a wizard is. I don't have them really near me, but some type of candy or some shit. And they're f like screaming like wizards, wizards. <laughs> so he goes into the store and he sees a cop. So he starts freaking out. He falls backwards, knocks the shelf over and everything, all the stuff on it. He's acting sketchy as shit in front of this cop. <laughs> And then he ends up leaving. And he's like, there's no fucking wizards. He's screaming at the kids. And then they almost get into an accident. And his wife, Lois, smashes her nose and breaks it against the, the dashboard. And then the next is when it cuts and you just see her, the bandage on her nose. This is the scene when I first saw this movie that really, like, amped everything up. That I was like, wow, this is really going out there. At their wedding reception or rehearsal dinner, whatever it is, 
and they all go outside because Adam's panicking. And him and Michael just have this huge heated debate, and he's just screaming at Adam, you're a loser, and Adam's screaming at him, you murdered that girl, you go home, you fucking murderer. <laughs> he's screaming this in the parking lot. Michael then gets in his car, and he's just filled with rage and probably the guilt from killing this girl. And he just wants to take out his brother's minivan. And he starts racing towards it. And Adam runs in front of it. And he smashes into his brother. Into the minivan. That, like, he's fucking, like, almost cut in two. <laughs> you don't see anything. He goes to the hospital. And then he dies. And he tells Lois something right before he croaks. So now they're thinking that he explained everything real quick before he died. And she knows that they killed a woman in Vegas. <laughs> And hid the bodies. So now Boyd has to try to find out if she actually does know. And what she was told by Adam before he died. The whole heated debate between them and argument. And then him running into his brother and killing his brother, man. Oh, that's so terrible. When they get to the hospital, the whole scene with the cop. When Boyd is taking over. Like, Fisher can't even talk. He's just mimicking whatever, whatever Boyd is saying. He, uh, he didn't realize it because he just lost control of the cars. Was there some sort of argument? No, nothing like that. We heard there was some arguing going on. What, some kind of sibling muscle flex thing? No, we were just talking. What were you talking about? Wedding. Married? Wedding? Yeah. Oh, it's uh, probably going to be the last time for all of us to be together each other. before he gets married. Yeah. Yeah. The next scene is heartbreaking, man. Like, and this is where Jeremy Piven just shines in this film, where he's having his breakdown in the diner, and he's just saying, I killed my brother. And then he starts screaming, I ran him down in cold blood. <laughs> Everyone's looking, everyone in this diner is looking at them, and he's just screaming, I'm a murderer, I killed my brother, and then he starts running away from them, they tackle him to the ground, and they have to calm him down, Boyd starts like drugging him, giving him medication, some type of pills, and like, he's saying give him two more, he's like, well, you're gonna owe deal, oh, the funeral scene too, man, that gets you, where he's just... Again, just he's broken, Michael, and he's talking to Lois, widow now, and crying in front of everyone hysterically in her arms, and then just falls on top of the casket, and just the worst scene you'd ever want at a funeral. Now, this is where Cameron Diaz pisses me off, because if you can't understand that a, his one of his best friends is dead, he says he wants to postpone the wedding. Like, he he just throws it out there and then retracts it real fast after she flips on him. But the fact that she can't even understand that and is like, I got family at the airport and stuff. I mean, I get it. But they just had a tragic death here. I mean, I think anything is worth postponing for the loss of a friend, but that's how her character is. So Lois says that to uh, Fisher that, Adam said on his deathbed that he left a letter for her. He said, when they're talking about it with Boyd in the diner, he starts saying that, like, I had no idea if she believed me. I love when Morse says, like, you know, you can tell when people believe you. It's obvious. He's like, I don't have that skill. But if I were to have it, I would say that she in no way believed me. So Lois gets them all to the house, and she's questioning all of them and saying, like, what happened in Vegas? Like, tell me what happened in Vegas. So you're, uh, and calling Boyd out, like, I don't want to hear from the fucking liar. Great dialogue. And uh, then he just comes, like, uh, Kyle comes out with it quick. Right when Boyd, I love this, when Christian Slater is yelling at Lois to calm down, and he's, like, holding a knife in, like, its holder, and he's like banging it up don't make this harder than it has to be and then kyle comes in and says like he was he banged a prostitute in vegas and then he just like looks around and he just lets the knife go that's brilliant and then she just starts breaking down that oh my adam and stuff had sex with a prostitute and boy throws in the line he's like it's not the first time either <laughs> adam had a thing for prostitutes oh that's terrible michael's whole a uh, little monologue about the Wahoo moment when him and his brother were younger and, like, they would use sparklers and they'd wait for it to burn at the absolute brightest and what if he missed that moment in his life? Excellent. Like, such a good scene. And Boyd stays back to calm down Lois. And he ends up killing her. <laughs> Just to shut her up so she can't say anything. So now Lois is dead 
Adam's dead. The prostitute and the, and the manager are all dead. So these guys got four bodies <laughs> that their their counters up to by now. This is where it gets like real dark. Boyd ends up coming outside and says uh, beforehand on the phone like, to bring Michael. So he brings Michael inside to talk to Lois. And then he just kills Michael and comes outside. <laughs> and you can see how psychotic it is because he's in the shadows in the back seat, so you can't see his face. And Boyd starts saying that this whole story is concocted already, that Michael was in love with Lois. That's what they were fighting about, the brothers in the parking lot. And, <laughs> and then the, he ended up killing her or something, and he killed himself or something like that. Some whole story he bullshits on the spot. But after saying all that, I mean, they all know he's full of shit. They all know what happened. But then, like, it's like he's not even trying to hide it. Like, he doesn't even know what he's talking about at this point. Because then he just leans forward and you see cuts and blood on his face. He's like, man, that Lois fought like a fucking Comanche. This just shows how messed up the government is, man. Because <laughs> now both of the, uh, the kids' parents are dead. Adam and Lois. So now he's the godfather. <laughs> so he's responsible for these kids. And they're going through Adam's, like, worth and everything. And they just take and take and take until he's got nothing. <laughs> and they're responsible for these kids. Oh, man, can you imagine what a terrible string of incidents Fisher when he's talking to Laura and starts crying hysterically in the accountant's office. And he spills it. And he says, we killed a prostitute in Vegas. Michael killed a prostitute. We buried her in the desert. And she said, you killed a prostitute and you buried her in the desert? And he's like, she's not alone. Brilliant line. And she doesn't care about any of the murder, <laughs> anything that Kyle's telling her. She's just like, I'm getting married, hella high water, like, doesn't matter. And then we get back to the beginning of the movie from where it started near the end here with the wedding. And... <laughs> Just Moore and Fisher both sitting there waiting with their legs just up and down their knees. They are so panicked. Boyd has the ring. He looks better. I don't know how this is a day or something after like he killed Lois or a few days. I don't know. But like his scars healed up real fast. Cameron Diaz just takes the the coat hanger, like the big metal coat hanger, and starts smashing him in the face repeatedly. This is my day. <laughs> Oh, what's so brutal. And they're in the middle of the wedding. Boyd is, you think he's dead, but he's not. So he starts climbing up the stairs, screaming, I got the ring. They need the ring. So Moore says, excuse me. He goes, opens the door to the stairwell that Boyd's coming up, and he falls down the stairs. He's bloody as can be. And he goes to reach into his pocket for the ring, and he grabs his hand, and Moore's scream... <laughs> He goes, Jesus Christ, the whole place hears it. Oh, I die with this movie. So she ends up saying, go into the desert, bury Boyd with the hooker and the other guy. <laughs> and while you're at it, put more in the ground too. So now she wants him to kill his best friend, the only one he has alive. <laughs> and then there's a dog. He says, you want me to kill the dog? <laughs> She she plays such a great bitch in this movie. So you see Kyle try to kill him more, but he can't. I mean, he's not a killer. He has the shovel and he has the face like he's ready. More turns around and then they're just driving back. And then this is where he hears Adam's conversation they had about the trees after the storm and everything. And then proceeds to crash head on into a car. Moore is thrown from the windshield into the other car. And then just the ending here, man, is a gut punch. Can you imagine this is your life now? We see Karen Diaz in her house cleaning. She looks miserable. She looks outside. Moore is in a whole chair. He sips through a straw. Kyle is had both his legs amputated at the knee. So he's in a wheelchair and they have the two disabled kids and she's looking at this and the dog, even the dog survived. The dog has three legs. It's hopping around. <laughs> Kyle's on the ground with missing his legs, like trying to comfort the other kid. And she just loses it. And she just like freaks out mental breakdown, <laughs> walks out into the front yard. The car almost hits her, scares the shit out of her. She just falls down in the street, screaming, crying. <laughs> oh, man, this movie kills me, if you can't tell. 
if you haven't seen it for some reason watched all this go watch it like it doesn't do it justice this film is fantastic and just another masterpiece for me so very bad things very great movie take care guys